found the devil. The devil? I found him. Really? Is this him? No. In this wheelchair? No. He's over here in this bucket. I kid you not. There he is. <laughs> Mr. Sin! <laughs> oh my not goodness. Not wondering us anymore. And I remember her saying, okay, you're going to play Mr. Sin today. And she hands me this purple puppet with the nasty mustache. Pop the little puppet up. And literally on cue, 80 kids out there all, boo, no, yuck, I hate that guy. I was like, man, these guys are trained on cue. Like, I don't know if they got candy for doing that or what. But, oh, man, they just want to come down on deep someone. Deep theological teaching. Deep theological uh, teaching. Well. Hey everyone, welcome to Together We Build. My name is Chris Banky. I'm here with Prudence O'Hare, and we are coming to you from an undisclosed location, not in the studio, as you can tell. That's it's right. <laughs> hopefully it's not too echoey. So hopefully the sound is good and not too echoey. It looks like the sound is coming through on a little audio meter. If you're not sure where we're coming from, it means you did not watch the last episode of Together We Build. <laughs> Am I right? Yep. That's right. So you gotta go watch that one. Make it happen. <laughs> so it is a little bit cold, so we're out here with blankets and so forth. And yes, I look like a doofus with this cap and scarf and jacket. <laughs> But it feels nice. Yeah. Well, it's not as cold as back home, though. It's not as co cold as back home. Mm -hmm. My goodness. It's craziness there. It's craziness there. Okay, so mm -hmm. this in this episode, um, uh, we're going we're gonna to show some footage and some different clips from things from a recent trip that we had to Rome, Italy. And we're going to talk about um, what happens when the past prevents you from actually being able to step into the next season that God has for you. And I'm super, super excited about it. Um, but before we do that, you know what we gotta do. You know what we gotta do, Prudence, what? The trivia. Yeah, yeah we gotta do the trivia. So you can continue to maintain that 100% score. 100% score. Uh, first question is, um, do the heads on Easter Island have bodies beneath them, yes or no? Yes. Yes, excellent, give me five. Bum, 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 bum. Yes, excellent. The heads, the Easter Island heads, if you don't know what those are, you should go check it out because they're very strange. Um, you can learn about them also in the Night at the Museum. He gives one of them bubblegum. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> uh, okay, question. What kind of bird can actually tell the difference between a Monet and a Picasso painting? You mean a real bird? A real bird. There's a bird that can actually tell the difference between a Monet and a Picasso. A uh, parrot? Incorrect. It's obviously a pigeon. Really? Yeah, a pigeon. Pigeon can tell. How does it I don't say know. it? It doesn't say anything like uh, that. That's just weird. Now, are the pigeons the ones that Becky calls flying rats? Yep. Um, so those flying rats apparently are good at telling the difference between different famous artists <laughs> um let me see here which two countries have never missed the olympics which two countries there's only two countries in the world that have made every single olympics games now i don't know how this is true because the olympics go back like for for thousands of years don't they? I think so. Well, anyway, did Greece trivia, start them? According to this trivia, there are two two countries that have never missed. Did One Greece other. start them? Yes. So Greece. And. By the way, Greece is correct. It's fifty percent of an answer. It's not a whole answer. Uh, answer. Italy. Well, Italy hasn't even been around very long, babe. Try again. Um, England. Britain. Britain. Well That's what I meant. done. Okay. All well right. Well done. Excellent. Excellent. 
What odd hygiene habit sparks creativity for humans? Now let me change this question because the habit is not odd. It's just odd that this hygiene habit sparks creativity. Baths. Very good guess. Showers. Really? Yep. It's the same thing. Water. I think it's sitting in hot I, water. So it doesn't say anything about this, but I think it's like the water and the white noise of it. Hmm. It's just like a, a like a bubble of like there's no distractions. Like, so hot tubs really should be doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I'm kind of making that up, uh, obviously. But. Minus the sting in your eyes. Um, you mean if it's got too much chlorine? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like an improperly run hot tub, obviously. Uh, what animal is constitutionally protected in Florida? Animal. What animal is constitutionally protected in Florida? Um. Mm. Is it a bird? No. Mm. Oh, you said animal. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's animal. A big cat? A big cat. Like, is that the technical term? A big cat? Yeah, just a big cat. No, a pig. It's a pig? A pig. Pig is constitutionally protected in Florida. So does that mean they don't eat them? I mean, I don't know what it means, but it's a little bit crazy. Okay, last one is an ironic one. Okay. Last one's an ironic one. That's a very big clue. What was the fire hydrant patent lost in? A flood? A fire. A fire. A fire. <laughs> oh, okay. got toasted so, up. That's it. That is that is the whole <laughs> trivia section for today. Kay. I hope you feel rejuvenated. I do. I feel better about this one. Um, excellent. Feel good? Yeah. Okay, so let's dig into this. Yes, I refilled my coffee. <laughs> um, so hopefully I don't get too buzzed uh. this. My, like my fourth cup. Good okay. grief, you're not um, going to sleep tonight. Well, I this one's watered down. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Uh, okay. Don't let the past hold you from where God has called you. So, so this topic has kind of uh, been spawned, so to speak. She's from us, like I've been teasing her because she always says "so to speak," like it's no, her phrase. No, I say so of sorts. And That's so what you've been of teasing me out. And so to speak. Okay, um, now on, you can count. Put in the comments how many times Prudence says either "so to speak" or "of sorts." Okay, well we can do the same thing with you, Mister Exciting. It's fantastic, by the way. Obviously, <laughs> get that bug. I can't get that bug. <sighs> Ninja. Uh, oh my word. I don't know if you okay. saw that, but like a ninja. She, like um, Mr. Miyagi. So we've been wandering around on our 25th wedding anniversary trip. Um, looking at a lot of old, old architecture. Yeah. Um, well, well. And, and just observing. Let me just play a few clips from Rome while she's talking. So. Those clips will play on the side of the screen. I'm going to add them afterwards. You keep going. And observing uh, different cultures and their um, traditions or techniques of doing things or um, religious habits and things like that. Yeah. So predominantly, we've been looking at Catholicism and really analyzing a lot of that in ancient rome in ancient yes ancient rome and um but it's it's kind of um taken us down this road where we we've, we've been observing this and um it just feels like things have been really stuck yeah um when you say as far thing, as what do you mean? but just the nature of of their culture, mm -hmm. like they really value tradition, which I think is fine. Yeah. 
um, but it feels like things just haven't really moved. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the things, uh, like one of the clips that we're showing right here is from the forums in Rome, and it's a bunch of stuff that was uncovered um, uh, when they were trying to actually put in some subway lines. So in Rome, they, there's like one or maybe two lines. They were going to have a network throughout the whole city, but they actually had to stop and kind of give up on that. So they, there's a little bit, but not very much, because every time they were digging, they would like run into new things from ancient civilizations, sometimes from things they did not know were there, and sometimes it was from civilizations past before Rome was founded, and they just, they like couldn't proceed with the subway. Yeah, they so literally, like, like, the old was stopping the new. Right. Now, we're not saying that they should like ignore this ancient civilization site and just right. put a subway. Like, we're not saying that, but it was just like, it struck us. This this is from like some of some of the stuff was from three or four thousand years ago. A lot of it's from like twenty five hundred years ago. Completely stopped today's progress. Right. Yeah. Literally. Think about that. The 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 some bricklayer from two thousand twenty five hundred years ago <clears throat> was putting in these bricks, and what he was doing, the actions he was taking from twenty five hundred years ago, are preventing somebody today from succeeding at forward progress in today's culture to help move people around the city. Hmm. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. And I don't know if there's like an easy answer to that, but just the whole concept of it as a whole, I think that we humans do this. Um, with the baggage yeah. that we can't seem to let go right. of. And the past that has traumatized us or um, has played out certain ways. And now we have a belief that it's always gonna be that way. Or a mistake no. we've made that we've let become part of our identity mm -hmm. and prevents us from moving forward. Scripture is absolutely packed with verses about specifically holding on too tightly to the past. I have a few here that I think are really relevant. Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, for one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> in other words, I, what he's saying here is, I haven't figured all of this out, this is Paul talking, I haven't figured all this out, but one thing I have figured out is that I need to be pressing forward towards the goal, not holding on to the past, and letting the past pull me back. I'm headed towards the goal to win the prize. Hmm. What do you think of that, Prudence? Well, I mean, I'm all for, like, I love historical things and the old things of the past and looking at, you know, antiquities and, and things like that. Um, but I don't feel like that is our future. Right. And um, I have this, like, little wooden postcard thing. This says, don't look back. You're not going that way. That's good. It's so simple, but it's like kind of a gut check. Yeah. I think that sometimes we do need to, to kind of take a glance at history because history, learning lessons from history is what helps us to stop making the same mistakes. Yeah, I totally believe that. Um, so there is that, but um, there's also, like, don't stay in that spot for super long right you need to remember and now let's let's look towards where we're going now and uh what that new is gonna bring yeah it's super important to study history it's super important to learn from history it's super important to honor the sacrifices people have made in history to create for us the situation we have today mm -hmm. so you don't want to ignore it and i think a lot of the times and a lot of the reasons that culture gets us 
into trouble is because we actually don't pay enough attention to the history, while at the same time letting what happened in the past control our future. It shouldn't be controlling our future. It's the past. Right. Like it's not now. It yeah. happened in the past. And it can't be changed. And it can't be fixed. And when things went bad, it can't be repaired. It can't be changed. It can't be reimagined. And it should not be reimagined. And it should not be revised. The way history is is ugly and nasty as it is sometimes and as horrible as it, as the mistakes are that were made, it shouldn't be changed. It should be learned from. Yeah. And then moved forward into the future of what God's calling us to. Mm -hmm. And that's what Paul is saying in this verse is one thing that I do, forgetting what's behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. In other words, I got to understand where I'm headed and go there. And I can't let that stuff stop me from going forward. Yeah. So, you know, um, some of these cultures are, are very grounded in their traditions. Mm -hmm. um, their food hasn't really changed. Like that I can see. By the way, in Italy, the food is unbelievable. Yeah, but I mean, just I like the variety of food. Yeah, I I do. I mean, we live in a very special spot with lots of variety. So when we come to a certain culture and they're just heavily into a certain type of food, yeah. then you start looking around to see, well, what variety do you have? Right. And there just seem to be a lot. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was sent on a mission yesterday to find Chinese food in Florence, so that's fine. Well, anyways, um, I think that tradition is, like, I love traditions, and I love, um, I do. I love eating the same thing often. I'm very traditionalistic. But I can also see that there's a danger in getting stuck. Camped out, being camped out there. Yeah. And yes, really getting stuck and cemented into this space where you can't come into any newness. Right. Um, and I think that this culture, like, it really shines in newness with, like, their fashions. They love. You're talking about Italian culture, European? Yeah. Yeah. They really, they really explore that side of things. Design. They they love art, um, but you don't like. I'm not seeing a lot of new architecture, really. Yeah. At least where we are. Yeah. I mean, there might be in different s spots of this country. Um, yeah, I mean we're kind of in a medieval ancient city right now. Yeah. You're kind of spilling the beans of where we are. Well, you said it first. So, it wasn't me. Yes, as we're filming this, we're currently in Florence, Italy, uh, which is an ancient, it's actually not ancient, it's really just a medieval city. Yeah. It's from the, it's from the Renaissance. Um, so, Maybe anyway. Uh, sort of stuff. Go look it up. But I think that it, this is something that a lot of us get hung up and stuck in, is just the baggage of the past and yeah. just and in really resigning ourselves to this is as good as it's gonna get mm -hmm. mentality um the whole idea that you know i know everything there is to know about god and the gospel is all there is and that's where it stops yeah um kind of that journey around the base of the mountain but never going up we're called mm -hmm. to ascend to go up the mountain. We're called this, I mean, it's flat out called to do that in Isaiah. And that's for a reason. But climbing the mountain's hard. The air gets thinner. It's treacherous. Yeah. It's a, it's a tumultuous journey. And it's, it's easier hard to work. stay at the base. It's, it's hard much work. much easier to stay at the base. But yeah, it really honestly, is. It's laziness. Yeah. Yep. Just and fear. It really fear oh. of what you're going to have to face or, or maybe be alone. And what you're doing, right. um, there's so many things that that really hold us back. But um, you know, we we aren't really intended to stay in a comfort zone. Right. And um, 
I'll be the first to admit that I like comfort. <laughs> I do. I like the comfort like of this the warm know. blanket like the know. and and, and like being it. warm when it's cold outside and so for someone like you, uh, who is a stabilizer solutionary uh, in the Nexus profile, if you don't know what that is, you need to check it out. Um, you do love certainty, traditions, tradition. Yeah. Um, I think when you say comfort, I think some people might get the wrong idea. Not comfort like, you know, fuzzy blanket comfort, which you like, but that's not really what you're talking about. You're talking about the comfort of knowing for certain how things are like they're like this i know what's gonna come and i know what's happened and i know what to expect that's what you mean by comfort uh-huh right? yes yes yeah there's there's a lot of discomfort in the unknown yes and um some of us are built for adventure more than others yeah. and i i don't really love adventure why not babe? i just come it's on. just it's just too much well, what, what about <laughs> But you like adventuring with me. Um, right. Well, I like that that you like that I'm there. <laughs> you are uh, someone that has worked hard. What I've seen, someone that's worked hard to push yourself out of that comfortable zone, out of the comfort zone. You you work to push yourself out of the comfort zone because you know that it's good. Yeah. But yeah, you, that's you, it's where the growth is. Actually, like the crazy stuff, and to just to to never know and not have a plan, and they're okay with that. And that's not you. No. So it's more like you decide. I've watched you do this. I've been with you almost thirty years now. I, I, you, you decide to take a step out into the unknown because you know that's where god's called you and it's not comfortable but you're doing it on purpose you're right it's abs i mean no i i don't i don't love it and you know i would like to say that it things get easier but i don't know that you they say things what do you mean? well i mean you know sometimes when you do the same thing over and over it gets easier like you right. you the fear gets broken off and and that is the case with a lot of things, but I feel like... You mean the fear of the new stuff? Yeah. You, it starts to get easier. Yourself. Right. The more repetitive that you do something, the easier yeah. it seems to get. Right. Um, but it's, it's like uh, you get faced with new things that you've never had to, to deal with before. Or face. Do you feel like uh, you can actually really step into where God's called you to go without going to new things, without stepping out and risking? No. I feel like it's no. required. No. Yeah, it is definitely risk is is required. And is that because that's what faith really is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't get you don't get to exercise your faith without there being some sort of risk involved, or um, it, there's elements of vulnerability too that are stuck in that. Um, it's it's not something that we all like to jump on board. Yeah. Which is why so many of us are stuck in the past. Right. And held down by the past. Yeah. Is because we we think that that is as good as it gets. Yeah. And right. um, things, life is just, you know, just suck it up and deal with it, buttercup. Yeah. I think, um, you know, in scripture, our, our life's journey is often depicted as like a mountain, like a journey mountain. That's why we are called. We're, we're called to ascend up the mountain um, in multiple places in scripture, right? Like we're... we're called to that but i feel like it's such a great example because basically the way i've heard it described and the way i i think of it is if the mountain is our journey like salvation is the base of the mountain you know it's the bottom and the air is the best down there it's warmest down there it's safest down there there's nothing crazy going on it's not it's not dangerous it's just like salvation it's a free gift it's wonderful it's it's nice but we're actually not called to stay there. We're actually called to ascend, we're called to go up the mountain. 
And the higher we get on the mountain, the more dangerous it gets. The more unknown it is, the thinner the air gets, the harder the journey is, the more difficult each step is. What do you think about that? Like, why is that? Why do you think that is? Why do you think God designed it? The closer we get to Him, the more risk we have to take, the greater our faith has to be. I think it's literally becoming um, less of us and more of Him wow. the closer that we get to Him. That is good. And in order to get into a space where it's more of Him and less of us, we have to go do the things that we can't do out of our own power. Right. Right. We have to force ourselves. He has to become the ultimate survival in oxygen. Right. Yeah. Well. That's why, I think. That's super good. Um, let me read this one. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Verse 19. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. That is crazy if you think about it. Let me read it again. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is always doing new things. Even when you read the ancient stories, right? Like. When the Israelites left Egypt, for example, this just came to my mind, they were following a pillar of fire at night and a pillar of clouds in the day. That was a new thing. They, they didn't have an instruction manual. They didn't have a, a historical document to read from the Pentateuch about how that happened. That, that was the first time they were, God did something new. And so we read these stories and we kind of look around us for things like that to happen again. But, but the whole book of Scripture is a book of things that he did that were new each time. Mm -hmm. So why would we ever think the God of infinite creativity and infinite, infinite everything would like stop, package it all up about 1,500 years ago, and then like that's it. Like we, we need to learn from all of the things that God has done. But he wants to do new things with us. And scripture actually tells us that that's the case. That's Jesus' own words says that. So I, I feel like in order for that to happen, we got to have faith. We got to have strength and courage and bravery. Yeah. Well, I mean, a sign of life is growth. Right. Um, and... I mean, God is the source of life. And where you're going to find that healthy growth, you're going to find, you know, Him ultimately in a lot of different ways. So, um, you got something? Well, she's got something. Good. I don't. I don't know if this has to do with exactly. Go for it. This was unscripted. I'm excited to see. Yeah. She's pulling up some document she's been writing. I think it's really tempting for us to want to hold on to the past because in all of its dysfunction, we are actually comfortable there because we know it so well. Yeah. We know what we can expect from it. We know what to brace for. It's just like this old stinky baby blanket that we have that we just keep packing That's around. Gross. That's actually really gross. Stinky baby blanket? Yeah. <laughs> I had a favorite corner on my baby blanket for a long time. A favorite corner? Yeah, it was a favorite corner. It was just like this little... The corner of the baby blanket? No, it, was, it had like um, this little stiff 
cotton corner piece and I used to just kind of flip it back and forth with my finger. You remember this? Yes, I do. <laughs> I love that thing. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> um, but I think that, you know, the past does that for us. We're, yeah. we're literally holding on to it because um, we just, we're scared to let go yeah. of it because we don't. It's known. That's one of the reasons. It's known. It's a known thing. And um, I, I don't know. I don't know why all the psychological reasons why yeah. we so desperately, I think a lot of cases, we just don't have people around us to show us that there's new ways of doing things, yep. Yep. Um, to teach us that this yep. really isn't um, the way that we're supposed to be. Right. This shouldn't be normal. Right. Um, because all of that's just been passed down generation after generation and nothing has changed. Right. So why should we? if we're not, right. you know, delving into that. But, you know, it's just... What have you got here? Well, I just, you know, we're facing um, a big housing deal with, oh, us, with us, yes. us personally. Yeah, being forced to move. And um, lived it's... For almost nine years. It's kind of a, like a, a long story, but this is just new revelation for us uh, in the last couple of weeks. So now we're faced with exercising our faith muscle. And it's, you know, it's automatically when you get handed some new thing in your life that's uncomfortable that yeah. you have to deal with, you automatically shrink back. Right. Like it's, it's just like this, oh, I don't want that. Oh, I don't want that. It's and here we go again. Here expression. we go again. Yeah. But I mean, logically looking at it, you get to face that thing with either a bad attitude or a good attitude. Yeah. Or you get to face it with working on it in your own power, which right. only yields anxiety, stress, and worry. Yeah. Or you get to face it, you choose to face it with God's power in tow and just tr doing your best to believe that He is going to provide. Yeah. So, um, you know, as we're just talking about living in the past and in, you know, just getting that news and you automatically shift into what's happened in the past. Yeah. Here we go again. Or, um, I want to believe that this future is going to be different, wow. but this past is telling me this right so where am i going to place my footing and my feet now i have that choice to make right and um anyway so this is just another story that is getting walked out and written out right. in the next couple of months for us yeah um so did you have something you want to read well, I mean, I, I was just writing out some thoughts, but, um, you know, I think that what he wrote here is that God has already showed up over and over mm. as we're looking back on the past. And because, and, you know, when you're given that, like if you're just standing there and you picture yourself being given some new scroll. Yeah that you aren't getting to open just yet, but you're handed it and you know that that's a, that's a change. Right. That's a new thing that you're just been given and you don't know what's in it. Yeah, it's an unknown. We're it's an scared. unknown. So now you're looking back on the past and you're looking back on your history and you're going, well, God has already showed up over and over. He's proven himself to be faithful. But and why am I real. here doubting his provision again? Yeah. Yeah, why are you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, because I think that when we are faced with something that we haven't experienced yet, we aren't sure if this is a problem. If this problem is something God is interested in solving. Right. Like we're asking these questions. We aren't sure if this situation is important enough to God to help us through it. And that's a lie from the enemy. Hey, your problem isn't important to God. 
That's a lie. Um, we aren't sure if this mountain is one that God will climb with us and guide us over, even just pick up and move. The question is, do we believe God loves us enough to see us and to hear us and to notice that we need help? And do we ourselves believe that God is as real as the skin on our bodies? Can we believe in his existence without seeing with our carnal eyes? Wow, friends, good and awesome. So uh, faith is a muscle, yet just like a real muscle, you have to work it. And you have to work it slowly. Like we don't go to the gym and automatically lift 50 pounds when we haven't been lifting the 25 pounds, right? Right. So we exercise the faith in the small things, asking God to heal our flu bugs, to help us find our lost keys, wallets, and pet ferrets. And we ask him to help us stretch the last of the grocery money and to send us the money to cover a doctor bill. But then you get put into positions where you have no option but to believe he will provide. A place where you have no other options but to rely on him. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, we just get really tempted to start wringing our hands with anxiety and, and taking baths and puddles of doubt. And we get caught up in the cycle of operating out of our own power. And we forget that we haven't told God yet that we are worried, you know? Yeah. I and... Mean, powerful. Do you have more? I mean, that is incredibly powerful. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I just think that life offers us opportunity after opportunity to grow our faith in God. And in its hard work, and then this circles back around to why we let the past hold us down, is because it is work, largely. It's, it's hard work and effort to go after learning how to be healthy. Oh, it is hard. It is much easier to make to the choice to... Passive. To, yeah, it really is. And, um, um, it's uncomfortable and it's contrary to all logic, largely. It often doesn't seem to make sense. And I think the one thing that we don't understand is that, you know, the enemy is watching us closely. Mm -hmm. They are creating, they have files on us. They have dossiers on us. They know exactly what we've walked through and what we've been through. You're talking about the demonic. The, the demonic, He's yes. Student of us. They are students of us. They are watching us. Yeah. Don't think that they aren't, because they are. Okay. They know us better than we know ourselves. They are great historians. Correct. And For they sure. know how we've handled things previously. So they are ready there to offer us whatever we, whatever they think that is going to disrupt us from keeping our eyes on the Lord mm -hmm. in the process of making the choice yeah. on whether or not we want to stay and go backwards. Right. Right. So um, they want to keep us from faith lifting is what I've dubbed it because it's really, I mean, Rather than weight lifting, it's faith lifting. I love that. <laughs> faith lifting. So, um, so whenever we're in the midst of that faith building and lifting is really uh, when we're, we're in that moment and we're handed that new thing. And now, or maybe it's something of the same, but now we get the option to choose a different way of reacting to it or responding to it. And um, we're choosing, do we stay in the past? Do we go back to the past? Do we, or do we move forward? Right. And it's really a choice. It That's how we moved into the future yeah. is all of those choices, everyday choices. Yeah. And, um, and then action behind those. Yeah. Man, that is so powerful. It fits in perfectly with this verse from, from Isaiah. And I feel like one of the things that I, I feel like God has been teaching me is that we need to have we, sh we need new story. Like God's doing new things. So we, we, we should be having new stories. Like we should always be going, 
and growing with the Lord in our faith, in our ability, and in supernatural, in our relationship with the Lord, in our relationship with the people around us, in our, in our marriage relationship, like all of those things should always be growing, right? So if you have someone that just is stuck telling the stories from the good old days, or if you yourself find, I'm just stuck telling the same stories of God's miracles from the past, and you don't have anything new, it's likely an indicator that you're not really going up. You're stuck on a plane. Maybe you're not at the base, but you're certainly not going up, right? Maybe you're stuck at one of the many base camps that you need as you're ascending the mountain. You're just kind of hovering there, not moving forward, reliving the good old days or what God used to do. We should be having new stories. We should be always going up and ascending the mountain, so to speak, um, as in our journey, right? Like it's easy to, to reach a new kind of comfort zone. So I love that. I love the analogy of mountain climbing because like the air gets thinner, right? So it's hard at first, but then you get acclimated to that elevation. So you get to 8,000 feet and you got to get used to the air at 8,000 feet. But then after a while, it feels fine and you're not short of breath because your body's acclimated. But if you go up to 12,000 feet, then the air's thinner again and, it, and it's harder again until you get used to 12,000 feet. And then you go to 16,000 feet, it gets harder until you get used to 16,000 feet and so forth, right? So it's such a good analogy because it's easy for us to go through these periods of growth and then rest, which is okay to rest, but then stay there. Mm -hmm. And we're called to go up. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about here is being able to step out into this new spot, taking all the things that I've learned from the past and making them part of my armor of bravery to go forward, but not like holding me back and weighing me down. Right. Yeah. Because I think that it, those intersections of, um, of new um, decisions, new movements, new scrolls, things that you don't have any control over. So, you know, we're facing this thing we don't really have control over yeah, it us yes yeah. us um and it's frightfully scary especially yeah. in the housing market that we're dealing with um but then you know with that initial flush of fear or dread or like um, panic almost, you know, yeah. you just feel those emotions going and that's all coming from yeah. the space of our humanoid self humanoid who self. believes that we have to do this in our own power. Yeah. That's where that comes I mean, from. That's such a, that is so important that the way that you said that it is terrifying and we should be terrified under our own power. Yeah. But we're not operating under our own power. We're operating under the power of the person, of the being that created the entire universe. So we should have absolutely no fear, no hesitation, no nothing holding us back because it, it isn't under our power. Under our power, should be scared. Yeah. But we have the authority of God behind us. But also, you know, um, what I what I'm just really trying to drive home is that um, we we when when these um, I don't know for lack of a better term these intersections come into our life like we literally kind of have to look this way and we have to look this way and have to look back briefly to say do I want to move forward here and how was what is the um emotions that i'm gonna allow here as i move forward so you, you're just you're saying you're deciding in advance you have to decide before you move forward well you do you have to you have to like you get hit with those initial things where all those things kind of just hit you like a water bucket of ice cold water, water the water ice. ice challenge you know 
never understood nice those one. challenges, um, but. That, that, um, is, oof, that is so good of a reminder. And I want, I think it ties into this verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 15 through 18. Um, actually, I just have 17 through 18. Uh, therefore, if anyone in Christ, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So the whole point is, is that as Christ came and did this reconciliation thing, which we're not going to go into all that right now, but as he came into this reconciliation thing, basically as he came, created an opportunity for us to be saved. That was the ultimate example of letting the old go and bringing in the new. And that is all about what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Yep. So it's um, it's kind of just shedding those old skins. That's mm. that's what Can't put new wine you, into old wine well skins. yeah. But even for like reptiles and and things like that, you, they can't grow unless they shed that old skin. Mm, and right. so you you know when we're sure. when we're faced with um, these fears and we're given the opportunity to go a different direction, that, that is the moment where you decide, no, I'm gonna handle it this way, and I'm gonna choose to believe that, you know, the Lord is going to, he's gonna direct this change, and he's gonna lead us into this change, and we're gonna do this without the severe stress of believing that it's just us. Wow. Because it's that, I think that right there is the key. That right there is the key. We, I think what I heard you say is, as we're moving forward, we can do so in confidence because we can go in forth in confidence knowing it's not just us. Mm-hmm. Right? That's, right. That's really what you're saying. Yeah. But I'm also saying that, you know, we have to practice the building our faith in the smaller things. So when the bigger things show up, we're able to lift it. Got it. Just like yesterday when we were climbing forever and ever and ever up those stairs. Yeah. Prudence said a couple of times during this year. So we climbed up inside of the tower at the Duomo which is incredible and it's you just go up and up and up and up and up forever like your legs are literally on fire and she's like my advice to people before they do this is to spend several weeks on a stair climber before doing this to be prepared <laughs> yeah right like so we made it just fine it wasn't a problem at all and i'm not even sore today now that i think about it are yeah, you sore i'm doing okay okay five yeah awesome yeah. excellent job um but like if we weren't you know somewhat active we would have been able to do like it would have not been possible to do it was like very aggressive climb yeah but i think that you know overall being consistent is important when it comes to working out yeah or um or, anything. or but more importantly just our process of building our faith muscle with god we have to be consistent with it so you're saying he's not going to be able to take us to places that require big faith if we're not already doing yes. things that require less faith yes. to be able to go to the place. So we need mm -hmm. to be putting ourselves in situations that feel risky and, and the That's way you right. keep describing it as a faith muscle. We need to be exercising our faith muscle. If, and you do that become, by, by purposely running after God in a way that takes you out of your comfort zone. Correct. That is correct. Okay, so in, in the last like four or five minutes that we have here, somebody that's listening to this, how do they do that? Like, let's say that they're, they're not. They're just like sitting, sitting around watching TV every day, so to speak, and they're just like uh, kind of drifting through life. But they're hearing this and they're like, okay, well, how do I actually, like, what does that actually mean in a real, in a normal life? Like, what, does that, what does that look like day to day to exercise the faith muscle? Well, I think it it starts by really um, beginning to uh, develop your personal relationship with the Lord. I mean, you can't 
You can't hear him if you don't know who he is. Right. Um, largely. And your heart has to want it. Right. And um, I think that the more you go after the heart of God, the thirstier you get. Like, it's literally, you don't... You get fed, but then you're, you're hungrier for more. Right. It's, it's a very strange concept. Right. Um, but it's, it's really largely about um, putting yourself into a spot of surrendering your own will. Um, and asking yourself questions, mm -hmm. which then in turn leads to asking God questions, right. which if you are in tune and actually listening, he will speak to you. Yeah. And yeah. he will speak Should to you. <laughs> he will speak to you. And um, so how much do you want it? Right. And I think it's, it's safe to say that you go through seasons where um, where God strengthens that faith muscle for you, but but it's kind of like a train, like, like learning how to ride a bike. Like you take the training wheels off, and then you like, you know, you run alongside, you know, the kid for a little bit, but then you got to let go, and it's like real wobbly, and sometimes they fall down. But you have to do that. So like, there's no way to learn to ride the bike without doing that. Like that's that falling over period is required. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of trial and error. And the great thing about uh, the Lord is that he has so much mercy for us. Yeah. And um, he, unlike the devil, who has no room for margin of error, you That's know, it, it's, it's a different ball game. And um, I, I really think that the hardest part is just really um, learning how to surrender ourselves on a daily basis and um, just really putting on the altar all the logic and our willpower and opinions and stubborn and the past. anxiety and the past. Yeah. And believing that your future is going to be different. Yes. Yeah. All right. So as we, as we wrap this up, I think to summarize here, you know, as we've been kind of going through and kind of looking at some of these historical things, the Lord has been really sharing with us that often we allow the past to hold us from Him taking us where we want to go. And I think the stuff that you read, Prudence, is so powerful that these kind of notes that you've been taking as we've journeyed through this and relating it to our life. But think about your own life. Think about the spots where maybe the Lord is pushing you and you're kind of resistant because of what's happened in the past. Like maybe things didn't go the way you wanted or you've got some trauma or whatever. Everyone does, okay? So don't be ashamed of that. Like that's a truth that everyone carries. But the enemy wants to come in and use that to stop you from moving forward. He wants to put a lid over the top of your ability to progress with that past. So you can't go through that. And God's saying, well, move that so that you can then go up and, you know, kind of ascend up the mountain, as it were, um, in your journey with him. So the only way to do that is, is to learn. Don't pretend like the past didn't happen. So you got to learn from it, right? Mm -hmm. But as you learn from it, is to then step forward um, and actually use those lessons as straight as as ways of strengthening you, not chains holding you down. Right. I mean, it's okay to carry the scars of the past, but don't be chained to it. Right. So you can't, you don't have to with pretend scars, it's not true. With scars, you can move forward. With scars. And they remind you right. of where you have been right. and what happened there. But it's, it's a part of your character building right it's a part of your story it's a part of where life clipped your wings and took you into a different direction yeah. and you were molded from that yeah. don't don't regret that 
Right. But don't let it chain you to the wall. Right. Yeah, the minute you do that, you'll not be able to step into the season that God's called you, which is exactly what the enemy wants. He he's, he's really wants to keep you kind of floating along, not progressing. So um, it's important to recognize that and break free of that. So I hope this has been uh, encouraging to you. If it's not been encouraging, it should be. Like, it should be encouraging. Like, no matter where you are in that journey, now you have an opportunity to recognize the past, learn from it, and then use it as a springboard into the future. Um, and I'm not saying that's easy. Like, it's, it's not easy. It is not easy, but um, it is your opportunity. Right? Not easy. Not easy, but, but opportunity. <laughs> not opportunity. So thank you. Uh, let us know what you th thought of this. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback. Send it in. Um, also, we would love your support. This show, Together We Build, is produced by Eagle Mountain TV. That is a ministry of Eagle Mountain um, uh, Church in Bend, Oregon. And it is, it's amazing. We are so excited. It's actually a 24 seven television network. You should go check it out, eaglemountain.tv. You can check it there. You go to eaglemountain.global and click the little TV button. It's another way to get there. You can find this program, as well as a whole bunch of other amazing original content, as well as a TV station that literally broadcasts 24 seven, but it's expensive and difficult and a lot of hard work to do this. So we would love your support. If you would like to support this ministry, please go over to Eagle Mountain dot global click the give button so eagle mountain dot global uh, click the give button and you can put in there eagle mountain tv or together we build in the little what it's for we would love it if if you would um, if you've been blessed by this to support this ministry even a few dollars a month would be super powerful we would love that it helps us keep this thing going if you want to find out more information about the amazing resources we have we've got e-courses conferences tv programs Amazing, amazing, powerful stuff. We've got the Pearl School of Transformation. There's so much amazing stuff going on. You can find all of that on eaglemountain.global. We'd love for you to check it out. And I hear bells ringing. So I guess that means this episode's over. Yep. So I guess we'll see you guys in the next one. We'll see you back see you in Central Oregon. Yes. <laughs> see ya.